Hey friends, before the video begins, I just want to mention that I had also started an ASMR channel on the side. I know that's not everyone's interest, but I've decided to branch out, and if that's something that sounds like it could help you out, feel free to check it out. Links in the description. Enjoy the rest of the show. For starters, I'm a 17-year-old girl from Colorado. Now, my dad's side of the family all have farms in Minnesota, built on land that was heavily populated by Native Americans well over a century ago. We know this because we found boxes on top of boxes of Native American artifacts, including tons of arrows and spearheads, ceremonial jewelry and pottery shards, tapping stones and more. Every year, during spring planting, the tractors bring up more. We have experienced paranormal happenings on our land, but I'm only there so often, so I've only experienced a very small handful of things that I couldn't explain away. For the most part, while I am a Christian and a believer of the paranormal and supernatural, I like to find logical explanations to things. I'm often very curious, and it takes a lot to scare me. I've been through enough stuff already to have lost most of my fear, but this year especially has been testing me on all levels. I had to fly back to Minnesota, which is where I really call home, the Wednesday after Memorial Day because my grandpa passed away on Memorial Day morning. His death honestly shocked us all. He was stubborn and strong, and despite his disabilities and illnesses, he always pulled through when he got sick and was determined to return to the farm. But I guess he just couldn't take it anymore and passed away peacefully at home, surrounded by his wife and kids. He wanted all of his grandkids, including myself, to be at his funeral, so I flew in as soon as possible, leaving my life responsibilities in Colorado. My mom was nice enough to come with me, even though my parents divorced when I was a toddler. She just stayed at a hotel and out of her way for the most part, even though we invited her to grandpa's wake and funeral. My mom wanted me to connect with my Minnesota family more than ever. So the night of the day I flew in, my aunt offered to take me to my Uncle A's place for something to do. My Uncle A just lives a quarter mile up the road from my grandma's farm or across the field from it. Grandma's farm is visible from Uncle A's house and I could easily walk to and fro the houses. When I got there, my uncle almost immediately gave me a 22 caliber rifle and a Mountain Dew soda and complained to me about his growing blackbird problem. He said he'd give me a buck a bird, so I agreed to go out there and shoot. It was getting dark and the sights on the rifle were off, so I didn't get anything at all except for leaves and sky. If the sights on the rifle were good, I would have made five bucks at night at least. My uncle had found his other twenty two rifle with the good sights, but by then it was too dark to differentiate the blackbirds from the robins, and it's illegal to shoot robins in the state of Minnesota. So to pass the time, my uncle set up a pyramid of old soda and beer cans and also balanced a few gallon caps on a gallon of laundry detergent for us to shoot at. My little cousins came out with their bows and BB guns, so my uncle and I would take turns showing the boys how to shoot their weapons and fired our twenty twos as well. We were having a very good time and I had almost forgotten the main reason why I was in Minnesota in the first place. My cousins had gone down to the basement walkout where my aunt and uncle's wife were sitting. Meanwhile, my uncle and I continued shooting our twenty twos when my uncle suddenly commanded me to stop shooting. He was tracking something with his finger. What is that? My uncle shouted under his breath. What is that? I asked alarmed. I squinted to see what my uncle was tracking and then I saw it. From our standpoint, we could see across many young fields over rolling hills. If you look to the left, you could see grandmas, and if you look to the right, you could see several more farms dotting the fields. If you look straight ahead, you'd see the side of a large hill with a field on it, and, and just ahead of that hill was a small grove of trees that also lined our property. The creature my uncle was pointing at was running parallel to the horizon and would eventually run across that hillside which was no more than a quarter mile away from us. It was hauling it, running as fast or faster than a racehorse. The creature was solid black, 
very large and slender with a small head, extremely long and thin legs and no visible tail. At first we thought it was a deer, but it was too slender and black to be a deer. Then I suggested it was a Great Dane or perhaps a horse, but no one in our area has a black Great Dane or any big black dog for that matter, nor does anyone have a black horse, and the way this creature was running, it didn't look like either of those. It was about the size of a horse, but it ran a bit like a deer with a spring in its step. It had a hunched back and legs that were long and skinny like twigs, and its head was pretty small. It looked like a greyhound, but much, much larger, and it looked a bit distorted and twisted too. I don't really know how to explain that, I just knew it was pretty messed up. I could tell the front of it was larger than its back, like its rib cage jutted out a bit, and while its front legs were almost like long human arms, and its back legs were like a deer's, only a bit more meaty than that, and its hip bones seemed to jut out a bit like hips on a Holstein cow. It was galloping and gaining speed like it was on the hunt, but we didn't see what it was hunting down. I didn't get nervous until it banked our way and charged into the thin line of trees separating our property from the neighbors. This line was two trees thick at the most, and the trees were oak trees no older than 20 years old. We should have been able to see the thing stop, especially since it was no more than 300 feet away when it ran into the trees, but we didn't see nor hear anything. Plus, even when it came close, other than its size, there was nothing very clear about it. It was just slender, long-legged, puny head, and didn't have any visible tail. My uncle's wife suddenly called our attention, asking what we were seeing, and said we were scaring my little cousins. My uncle described it just as I did, and I confirmed because she thought it we were all just messing around. My uncle and I stayed in our places and rifles loaded and ready, and stared at those trees for a good ten minutes, occasionally glancing at each other, and saw nothing exit nor heard anything move. It was a windless, quiet night, so we could almost hear everything, including the cows nearby over a mile away. Needless to say, we were both pretty freaked out, and I spent some time on my phone that night looking up various things to see if I could come up with a rational explanation for what we saw. I found nothing, except for skinwalker stories and descriptions, which fit the creature we saw perfectly. I've heard of skinwalkers before and many stories, but never really believed they existed. Even if they did, I thought they were only in the southwestern states, but I guess they can appear anywhere. What do you guys think? I'm open to possible explanations, similar experiences, and other ideas. I don't usually share paranormal stories, but what happened that Wednesday night will definitely stick with me. I'm going to remind everyone that many things I've experienced could have had an explanation to them, and I'm 100% open to skepticism. I'm only retelling my story exactly how it happened to me. Whether or not you believe it was paranormal is up to you. Feel free to discuss your feelings about it with me or others in the comments. The Shadow People Whenever I'm experiencing anger or tension in my life, I encounter and see what can only be described as shadow people. When I was 15 years old, my mother and I would constantly be at each other's necks. The reason why is long and personal, but just know that we are not seeing eye to eye at all. Every day there would be an indescribable tension in the house, just waiting for that spark that would start the hour-long yelling match between us. This was the worst it had ever been, and an odd side effect of this constant anger were the shadow people. They would usually appear in my room at night, it all started with two. I would see them standing in the middle of my room. They were hazy, like smoke. They had empty, white, blank spaces for eyes where some of their hazy bodies parted. They also had unnaturally long necks that would span almost to my ceiling. The two shadow people would usually just watch me. I can't really tell you I reacted too dramatically. I would always just cover my head with my blanket, too afraid to do anything or believing that I was seeing things. As the situation with my mom got worse, I found myself unnaturally angry all the time. 
It got to the point where I would start to have literal murderous thoughts that I wanted to act on whenever someone even tried to talk to me or was near me. As I continued to become more irrationally angry every day, I would see the shadow people every night to the point in which I would just ignore them. After about a month of this happening, everything came to a chilling end one night. I was jolted awake by what sounded like the clang of a metal object hitting something hollow. There's nothing in my room that could have fallen to produce a noise like that, so I sluggishly assumed I had imagined the sound. However, something wasn't right. I felt hot all over. I was literally sweating through my shirt. I could also feel something right on the side of my face, like a hot breath. I was lying on my left side facing my room, which appeared empty. Determined not to let what I assumed was my imagination scare me, I got out of bed and stood up. I walked to my dresser and checked the time on my phone, which I think was about 3am. What happened next makes me so incredibly uncomfortable to even remember. I looked towards my bed, ready to crawl back in, and hovering inches away from where I was just laying is a large, misty, humanoid figure. I froze in shock. All of my other sightings of the shadow people did not compare to this. I had brushed off my other experiences with them as being tired, dreaming, or seeing things, but this thing was right in front of me. I was fully conscious and standing about three feet away from this thing. As I stared at it, I could hear a low hum coming from it. It was like a mixture between deep growl and a man humming in a deep voice. I was holding my breath and all at once my body seemed to move without my control. I leaped toward my bedroom door, threw it open, and then slammed it behind me. I'm surprised I didn't wake my family. I just stood with my back to the door in the dim light of the hallway, even though my knees were shaking. I was far too afraid to sit down in fear I would leave myself vulnerable to that thing if it came after me. I don't know how long I stood outside my room. Eventually, stumbled downstairs and slept on the couch in the TV room. In the morning, when I went back upstairs to investigate my room, whatever I had seen was gone. After that night, I slowly stopped seeing the shadow people and things between my mother and I unexpectedly improved. I have no idea what that thing was and I cannot explain it at all. I personally feel like whatever that thing and the shadow people were, they must have been attracted by my anger and maybe they were feeding on or feeding me anger. I seriously don't know. Maybe it was all a stress-induced hallucination, or maybe I was dreaming the whole time. Maybe I was just so tired that my mind played tricks on me. I have considered all of these things, and I honestly still cannot explain what happened that night. There are a few things I've experienced since then that have lived up to the terror I felt from seeing that thing hover over where I just slept, watching me sleep, and literally breathing down my neck. Ever since I was a small child, I was talking about aliens. Aliens this, aliens that. I spoke about them all the time, even though I never really knew what they were. My uncle and cousin would say, Hey Wyatt, what sounds do the aliens make? And it makes some weird noises and they'd all laugh. I would stargaze every night. I lived in the country so I could easily see the stars. I wanted a space-themed room. I got those glow-in-the-dark stars that you put on your walls and they leave that residue when you try to peel them off. You know the ones. My covers had planets on them. I got a telescope for my fifth or sixth birthday. But the strange thing is that my parents never talked about aliens. They never talked about space. It was a fascination that I came up with on my own. Then it's like one day something changed. All of a sudden, I was terrified of aliens. My cousins would taunt me and prank me by pretending to be aliens or by pretending to see UFOs. I would cry and start to go into a state of panic and don't even get me started about the movie E.T. Years and years passed and I was 15. I didn't have the same obsession and fear of space or aliens. It was something that I had grown out of. Until one day, I saw something. My bed was right next to my window so when the moon was full you could see the light pour onto the opposite wall. I was on the second story, so nothing could climb up there without a ladder. 
My window opened up to the roof, which was flat, so someone could walk out of my window and stand on it. I was 15, fast asleep in bed. It was a full moon. I woke up immediately, terrified. I could feel a presence, a presence that I was afraid of. I kept my eyes close, because I knew that if I opened my eyes, I would see something that would scare me. But I eventually built up the courage and opened my eyes. Like I said earlier, during full moons, the light from the window would reflect on the opposite wall. When I opened my eyes, I saw two humanoid shadows. The way the shadows were positioned, I could tell that they were outside my window, looking inside, looking at me. I was so afraid I just stared in fear until I eventually fell back asleep. Listen, I live in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky. My family doesn't have much money, so it wouldn't make sense for someone to rob our house. That's why I don't think it was human invaders. You'd think that's where the story ends, but it gets way worse. So a year passes and I'm 16. I was tired so I was going to go to bed. I walked in my room, looked at my clock. It was around 11.16 p.m. I remember this very clearly. I prepared my bed and I lied down, but as soon as I lied down, boom, I couldn't move. I've had sleep paralysis before, but never this quick. It was instant this time. My eyes were open, my arms were hanging off my bed. I could hear my door creak open, and light began to enter parts of my room. I thought it was our dog, Trooper, who decided to come into my room. I was so relieved because I thought, if I can get Trooper to lick my hand hanging off the bed, then I'll be able to move again. So I tried to whisper, Trooper, Trooper and then the room went completely dark. I felt cold, wet breath against my ear, and then I heard a terrible, terrible voice. It was high pitch, and it spoke gibberish, super fast gibberish. All of a sudden, I could move. I burst out of bed screaming my head off. My room was empty, no monster. I looked at my clock, it was 3.45 a.m. I didn't even go to sleep. It only felt like I was in bed for a minute or two. I don't know what that creature was, but based off my past experiences, I think it could have been an extraterrestrial. This is kind of a weird thing for me to talk about, purely because our family moved out of this house in about 2013, and it's just something that we never really talked about when we moved out. To start this off, we moved from a loud and quite bad neighborhood into a private house in a small part of an industrial estate in 2008, and the good part was, these houses were fairly new in comparison to old buildings, so there wasn't any problems. The house itself was laid out as compact as it could get, with both me and my brother suffering from closet rooms, aka tiny rooms that could barely fit a single bed in. The first thing that I guess could contribute to this slew of weird occurrences was the fact that my father was slowly getting worse off job-wise as he was a private taxi driver at first which did get some money for us to live off of but the money just kept dwindling over time to the point that we could barely live off the money that he was bringing into us. Sometimes he would be bringing back under 40 pounds a night and even on occasion he would come back with only one ride's pay. Obviously, this started causing quite a lot of arguing with my parents. The only thing that makes me question this as something that could be a catalyst as to what happens later on is the fact that my dad was doing well in this job before he moved to this house. Sure, it isn't the best of jobs to have, but there were barely any days that my dad would come home with basically no money, but it was becoming more and more common as the months passed when we moved into this house. Another strange occurrence is that my dog Gracie had this one place in our kitchen right next to the entrance of it which she started to dig at constantly for about 5-10 to 10 minutes each time. We found it pretty funny at first as her digging motions were just hilarious because she was a fluffy dumb dog. It only started becoming more weird when it got to the point where Gracie was leaving so many scratch marks on the floor and made us realize just how much she's digging at this spot in particular. And that's when we started entertaining the idea that there could be something underneath us. But this was kind of just a, 
Oh, so spooky joke between our family, basically. Now thinking back on this makes me a bit unnerved because whilst I was in primary school and I first moved to the town, I was told that the houses that me and her lived in are built on graves, aka a burial ground. Now I don't know if this is true because, like I said, I was told in primary school and we're all quite young children at this point to believe anything is spooky. Some time passes, about two years if I can remember correctly, and my mom starts complaining about getting headaches and them not going away. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't really pay her any mind because headaches shouldn't really be that big of a deal, you know. They pass after some time. The only problem is my mom's headaches didn't really pass, they just got worse. Now, my mom is the kind of person who avoids going to the doctors for things that are deemed unnecessary in her head, as she doesn't want to burden them with something that should pass, but it literally became months that she was weak and having terrible migraines, and she wasn't doing anything about it until one time she was walking down the stairs as I was walking to go to the kitchen, and as we crossed, she told me she really didn't feel well and her nose started bleeding. Obviously at this point, we all made her go to the doctor and find out immediately what was wrong with her. My mom went through a lot of stuff with the doctor and even had blood tests and scans done to possibly find out what was wrong with my mom, only for them to be stumped and basically tell my mom that they don't know what is wrong with her and how to treat her as her blood tests were showing a fine and there was nothing coming up on the scans so for all the doctors knew, they basically thought she was a-okay when obviously me and my family knew that she clearly wasn't. This went on for a while, my mom going back and forth to the doctors with no improvement yet not really much of a decline, just a steady constant migraine. So that's the part with my mom happening. Another strange occurrence that I can point out is that once, all of us were sat in the living room together watching a movie when we all jumped because of a big bang and one of the patio doors behind us just completely shattered, but still stayed within the frame of the door, but there was literally no point of impact on the glass to show that it had been hit. The dogs were in the room with us too, so they couldn't have possibly have been suspect, and there was no one in our back garden as far as we knew, as it was broad daylight, and we always had a view in the back garden from the couches, so we would have seen. Fast forward a little more, and this is when things started getting uncomfortable for me. I have only ever had sleep paralysis three times in my life, and two of those times happened in that house, and the scariest things I've ever been through. I laid in bed and just stared at the ceiling thinking about life, and that was the biggest mistake I've genuinely ever made. I remember just hearing a weird ringing in my ears, and feeling the door of my room opening up more, and that was when the instant what is going on, get up and look, mantra started playing in my head, but I just couldn't move at all. The only thing I could do was just stare at the ceiling as I was doing and, my god, whatever it was I was feeling approaching me started coming up from the bottom of my bed, and as it got onto the bottom of my bed, I felt the bed dip, so much to the point that I felt like my back was straining from how bent my legs were supposedly being placed and it just didn't stop. It then kept coming closer to the top of the bed, and the only way I knew this was because the dips in the bed were closer to me. The strongest fear I felt was when it finally stopped moving, but I really wish it didn't because it was literally lying down next to me, staring at me, but I couldn't physically see it. I could heavily feel it. I felt that huge dip in the bed next to me, and I felt it move. This terrified me so much when I woke up that I couldn't sleep in that room or on my own for a little while. The reason why this is sticking out to me is because, like I said, I've had sleep paralysis one time before this had happened and it just didn't feel the same. This experience that I had just had some weird air about it and I hated it. I did say it happened twice but the second time of this happening was a lot weaker due to me knowing that this is all just sleep paralysis and I woke up by wiggling my toes. And here I only put two and two together until years after we left this house, and I started thinking about it and connecting a few dots. My brother once told me that he refused to sleep in my room after he had a bad nightmare when sleeping in there. Obviously, I questioned him about it, like, 
hey, I kind of want to know why you find my room spooky, and man, I really wish I didn't. I genuinely wish I didn't even piece these two together because it made my heart sink. Basically, my brother had a nightmare in my room where he was staring into our bathroom as it was easy to do whilst in my bedroom, and the shower curtain was pulled over. What was horrifying, though, is that there was a tall, weird thing staring at my brother over the top of the shower curtain, and it just stared and stared until it slowly pulled the shower curtain over and made its way over to my room. My brother told me that as soon as whatever it was got to the door of my room, that he immediately woke up and was terrified. Now, the reason why this almost made me crap myself when I was thinking over these things is how my sleep paralysis starts out. It's basically the ending of my brother's nightmare continuing. After a year or two before we moved out of this house on the 2nd of September, on my first day of year 7, our dog Gracie had a tragic accident. But everything about this accident just screams suspicious. Gracie was a super healthy dog and she was only two years old but showed no signs of being possibly unhealthy or having any problems in the future of her life. But this whole crap show happened in the span of about two days possibly, maybe even less. Gracie started vomiting and pooping out blood to the point that it was making puddles in the floor and she could do nothing but hide under our couch shaking because she didn't understand what was happening and clearly neither could we. We were all shocked. Panicked, upset, and just didn't know what to do because it wouldn't stop so we raced her to the SPDSA. We immediately had to give her in and they said she will have to stay overnight so they can find out what's wrong. Gracie died that night in isolation. One thing that stuck out and still does to this day is what they said about her death. They treated Gracie for a super fatal dog disease named Parvo and Gracie died due to toxic shock from the treatment they gave her and that they're sorry but they didn't possibly know what was wrong with our dog if it wasn't Parvo. Sound familiar? My mom being extremely ill with nosebleeds and the doctors don't know what possibly was wrong with that. My mom then became super upset and finally somewhat suspicious of the house and chalked it up to the fact that the carbon monoxide poisoning might be the suspect here. I have quite a few questionable thoughts about that due to the fact that my mom was the only one who was seriously ill and showing these signs whilst everyone else was okay. Even so, we had moved out before we even checked the house for carbon monoxide poisoning and well I guess I'm just glad I left that house but I still do have lots of weird thoughts about it. I think that this house just had a bad omen about it and I low-key worry about the people who have moved into it now because there's definitely just something off about that house. And I think as much as my mom denies it, it has completely impacted her as she's now looking up things like feng shui for our home and also kicked up a lot of crap because the new house we moved into is number 13. But I think this house is pretty great considering my mom is in great health now and my parents both have really high paying jobs working together and even my brother is getting on with his life great now too. Basically, just wanted to ask what your guys' thoughts might be. Do you think I'm just being too suspicious? Or do you think that something weird was going on in that house? I have experienced a lot of paranormal activity and I've seen ghosts all my life. It's nothing new to me, but it still scares the crap out of me. One night I was walking home from work. This was about the summertime about a year ago. I got off the bus and I had to walk about eight blocks to my house, so as I walk, I end up walking by an elementary school and, and it was nighttime. I'm walking, listening to my music on my phone with my headphones in my ears. That's all I could hear. I can't remember what I was listening to, but I'm walking and walking and all of a sudden my phone starts acting weird like it started buffering a lot more than usual and I have a good plan and the music wouldn't play. My phone was acting out of control. My phone would go to different sites, different apps randomly and all of a sudden my phone turned off. I tried to turn on my phone, nothing would happen. All of a sudden I felt something behind me. I was too scared to turn around because, I mean, it wasn't a bad feeling but it was just a feeling of knowing that a human or somebody wasn't behind me, 
but I felt the presence behind me, if you know what I mean. So before I got to turn my body all the way around to see who was there, there was a strange, foggy, yet beautifully smoky orb just floating next to me, and it kept floating past me, and it wasn't too bright or too noticeable if you were far enough away, but I felt like as soon as it appeared I had this strange feeling that I was totally safe. I saw this orb or whatever it was, and it was just floating casually, just floating by, and when I really looked at it, it had like a really pretty smoky indica kind of blue color mixed with it, like a silvery gray, and it was really smoky looking. But I can't really describe it, but it was pretty in my own eyes. So I watched it float for a oh good, not even a minute or so, and then it totally vanished, and I swear after that my phone turned on and was back to normal. This is just one of my little experiences that I've had. One of my dogs is acting really strange lately. I've been working from home a lot lately, two to three days per week, and I've noticed some weird behavior out of my mail, hardly. And this all came to kind of a pinnacle on Friday, and has continued over the weekend and today. I've noticed this doesn't happen when my wife is at home, so either whatever is going on is only active in the mornings and early afternoons, or it has something to do with her being absent. Normally, Harley is very laid back and a very chill dog. Normally he just wants to be around and hang out. Very low energy dog. So the latest stuff he's doing is very out of character for him. We have noticed that he likes to be under our bed during the day. He's always been a burrowing type of dog. He's been napping under our bed during the day ever since we moved into this house two years ago. So that isn't out of the ordinary. But lately... He's been going into these really bad barking and growling and whining fits while under the bed. It honestly sounds like he's fighting and when I'm here and this is going on, I'll go in to check on him and he's fine, just noticeably freaked out about something. Friday, for example, I thought maybe he was stuck under the bed. He sounded so panicked I thought there was legitimately something wrong. So I went up there and coaxed him up to the top of the bed and he just curled up against me under the blankets and whined and shivered. So I brought him and his bed and a blanket into my office and put him under my desk and he was fine for the rest of the day. Saturday, the wife was out gardening and I was doing some work. I work in IT and weekend work is common and Harley was under the bed again, started freaking out. Same thing, I got him out from under the bed and he just whined and shivered until I took him outside with the wife. Sunday, similar thing. Except, he wouldn't come out from under the bed at all. No treats, offers for walks, or playtime or toys or anything would get him out from under there until the wife came home from whatever she was doing. Now, today, this is what's going on. Same thing with the under the bed freakouts. Except when I can get him out from under the bed, he takes a single glance at the ceiling, tucks his ears and his tail like someone is shouting at him, and hauls it back under the bed. I've been able to get him outside, and he's fine when he's outside. That's where he is right now. But if I open the door for him to come in, he will get about halfway into the door, glances at the ceiling and tucks his ears and tail, and runs back out into the yard. He won't come inside anymore. Now, I'm pretty skeptical with paranormal stuff, but this all started around the same time that I've noticed some other weird stuff going on around here. For example, my tools are constantly being moved around. I have my toolbox in the garage very neatly organized and I will go in there to find something and it will be in the wrong drawer entirely. I have just attributed that to the wife using the tools and not putting them back in their spots. Or I'll go downstairs into my man cave and all the lights will be on. Again, I attribute this to being forgetful about it. Or another thing, I have a server rack in my basement that has my media server and my networking equipment for the house and my home theater equipment for my man cave in it. On top of it, I have a monitor connected to the media server when I need physical access to it. This monitor says, powered off 99% of the time, and the past few weeks, every time I go down there, the monitor is on. Same thing with it. I assume maybe I've forgotten to turn it off, or some process is powering it on or something. I don't know. 
I've also been woken up in the night 100% sure I'm hearing footsteps and voices in the house. There have even been times where the wife has heard it too, and I've gone through the house with my gun while she called the police. Nothing found. No signs of a break-in or anything. I found cabinet and pantry doors open in the kitchen, and finally at least twice the water in the master bedroom faucet is turned on on its own, and I don't mean water leaked from the faucet, the handles were turned and water was following. This all has occurred within the last two to three months or so. I can easily dismiss a lot of this stuff, but with my dog now doing what he's doing, I'm getting a tad worried. I'm starting to run out of excuses for this stuff. Who do I call for things like this? My mother passed away two weeks ago and this Saturday is the last day we'll be in her apartment. We rented it for 16 years and it was the main family hub for holidays and everything else. We've also had a lot of loss here. Three cats passed away, the most recent mama cat last summer shortly before I moved out, as well as two dogs. Even before my mom passed, she claimed to experience a lot in the apartment, like feelings of being touched or unusual sounds. She was a very spiritual person and believed that several loved ones were here with her, including when she passed, also here at home in hospice care. My sisters are firm believers in spiritual religious matters as well and believe they've seen several signs from mom so far here and while out and about. Things like her favorite songs coming on the radio at certain times, her favorite channel freezing but all the other channels remaining normal, and that kind of thing. They find a lot of comfort in the idea that she's communicating with us, so even if I don't necessarily believe the same thing, I don't want to say otherwise. For my part, I've been consistently hearing what I believe to be Mama Cat in the apartment. She has a distinctive chirping meow and was very talkative when she was alive. While moving things out, I have heard her in other rooms and just now when unlocking the door, I could swear I heard her on the other side of the door already greeting me like she used to do when I lived here. Whether or not it's real, I'm just trying to also take solace in the idea that we're being given signs that mom is okay, but I'm worried about what will happen when we leave on Saturday. I think my mom's spirit, if she's here, has no problems with staying with the family, but I'm concerned that our pets wouldn't know where to go. I hate the idea that this is the last place for mom and cat to be and that we're leaving here. I don't want her to be stuck, if that makes sense. I'm not usually such a firm believer in the supernatural to the point where I'm scared about these things, but I'm wondering if anyone has any advice or words of comfort for when you leave a place that experienced a lot of loss. I'm afraid that if I try to seek out any spirits here intentionally and invite them to come home with me, I won't have any idea what I'm bringing with me. I am definitely superstitious and have tried hard not to provide or meddle in any spiritual matters, even if I might not truly believe they exist. I was home alone and in my bedroom, sitting at my vanity and doing my makeup. The bedroom doors on the wall that's adjacent to the wall that my vanity is pushed up against so when the door is open, I can see it behind me in the mirror. The door wasn't open very wide, maybe a foot or less. I finish up and turn to leave the room, stepping toward the door that is slightly open. As I reached out for the doorknob, the door suddenly closed so that there was no gap between the door and door jamb, but hadn't fully clicked shut. This caused me to hesitate for a split second because I knew I was home alone and... At first it seemed as if though it had been pulled shut since it happened so quickly, but I wrote it off as my movement somehow creating a gust of wind that caused the door to move. As I reached out again a second time, the door clicked shut. I grabbed the doorknob and tried to twist it and to my horror, it wouldn't move. My blood immediately ran cold because my first thought was that someone was on the other side holding my door shut. To clarify, it has no lock. I tried turning my doorknob and pulling for what felt like maybe 10 seconds and my heart was pounding in my chest when suddenly the doorknob turned and I yanked my door open. I looked into the hall relieved to see nobody was in front of me and 
called out for my parents, but they still weren't home. I ran down the hall, looked in each room, and ran all through the house just to make sure nobody had broken in, but all of the doors were locked as I'd left them and the windows were all closed. I ended up running upstairs and opening my door to about how wide it had been before and started trying to replicate my movements to see if walking, rushing toward the door somehow caused it to close on its own, but nothing produced these results. All of the windows were definitely closed so it couldn't have been a draft unless the AC suddenly picked up, but the part that definitely freaks me out and got my heart racing was when it clicked shut that second time and I couldn't turn the knob. It literally felt like someone was holding the door closed. I'm sure it could have easily been something like the doorknob jamming, but all of that together with the door seemingly moving on its own twice had me sitting in the living room for the rest of the day in case I felt the need to make a run for it. Recently, I've had just a lot of strange things happen to me. My house has always creeped me out. I've always felt something in my house, and I've always felt watched. That was nothing new, but recently it's been amplified. It's so much worse. I'm scared to go downstairs. I'm scared to go down the hallway without a light on. I'm terrified of my own home. I hear noises outside my window, inside, under my bed, behind my bed, outside my door, and other rooms that are empty, and all of those noises have no explanation. My cats stay in my room on the foot of my bed. I don't have a rodent problem. I do live in an old house. It's clean. Nothing raggedy or worn down about it, but it is old. I guess it was called a plantation house or something, but I'm not sure. I've also noticed on top of the noises, things are being moved. I remember I was looking for my flat iron, and I mean, I looked everywhere for the thing. No one else in my house uses a flat iron, and... No one else has been in my packed bag or in my room at all. I looked inside my bag. I took everything out, unfolded everything, couldn't find it in there. I looked around the outlet. I would normally plug it into, and it wasn't there either. I looked everywhere and tore my room apart, and I couldn't find it. I picked things up, said what they were, and put them down just to make sure I wasn't overlooking it. Still hadn't found it. I woke up the next day. It was at the outlet I had definitely checked earlier. I've had shirts that I've folded or hung up disappear. I've had books, notebooks, shoes get moved from one place to another that have no reason to be where they are moved. My cats have been acting weird as well. They're normally sweet, cuddly, clingy like normal cat personalities. Recently they've been staring absolutely everywhere. It terrifies me because they would stare right behind me with these ginormous dilated eyes like they were seeing something they were terrified of. Sometimes they'll be walking in my room and completely spaz out like something was grabbing them or touched their leg. I also like to mention I don't have a flea problem. I considered it, I looked through their hair, I didn't see any fleas, and I hadn't seen any around the house either. They're inside cats, but regardless, I got some flea medicine just in case. Nothing's changed. They'll stare around my room and scatter around like something spooked them. They'll scatter into my room. They'll scamper out of my room like something scared them off. I've been having some weird dreams, but normally weird dreams are pretty average for me if I've ever remember them. I made a post about a dream I had earlier this week that's been kind of scary, but that's about it. If anybody has any clue of what's going on, please let me know. We are a Middle Eastern family. My dad left his home country and fled to Saudi Arabia to work there, went back after making some money and got married in his home country and went back to Saudi with his wife. My mom gave birth to her first son in the early 90s and then they had another three kids in the late 90s, three sons and a daughter. I was the youngest. We live in an annex, an apartment at the top of the building that takes around 25% of the roof of the building. The rest of the roof is a large area filled with TV satellites and other junk. My parents were quite discreet about all the shady things that happened in that apartment until we grew up and they became more open about it. The apartment had three bedrooms, a living room, two bathrooms, and a very tiny wooden attic and small kitchen. 
There's no major story here, it's just a bunch of creepy encounters with me and my family that we've witnessed, and I'll write them down, in no particular order. I used to sleep in the bunk bed with my older brother being at the top, until he asked me to switch with him, and I liked it at first, but then I realized that my brother didn't switch with me for no reason. After a while, whenever we would go to bed every night at around 11pm, I kept hearing some noise on the ladder of the bed, like someone is climbing it. I never had the guts to look. Sometimes I would feel the presence and pressure of someone sitting on the bed too, but by then I've developed this technique where I would just cover my whole body with the blanket and force myself to sleep. I told my mom and she responded, there's nothing, just be a real man and sleep. I would also hear kids laughing in the living room, which is next to our bedroom, but I grew to ignore those voices and eventually it stopped bothering me. I remember a few nights where the neighbors would knock on our door at 3am and they'd ask my parents to not let us ride our bikes on the roof because it's disturbing them. My parents apologized to them even though we were all asleep and there was no one on the roof riding their bikes. I knew that there was something wrong with that place when I noticed that our bicycles were in different places in the roof the next morning and there's no way anyone can go to the roof and play around because the door was locked and the only person who had the locks were my father. My siblings knew about this too, but they didn't talk to me about it, because I was the youngest and they didn't want to scare me. We moved back to our home country because my dad wanted to start some business over there and we stayed there for three years. That was when my dad decided we should go back to Saudi Arabia. It was so hard to find an apartment and our apartment had already been rented to a couple. But there was an empty apartment on the first floor in the same building and my dad took it because it was the closest to his workshop. I thought that this time it'll be all normal, but on the contrary it was way worse than that annex. After just one week, I woke up around 4am to the sound of the sunrise prayer, and as soon as I opened my eyes there was someone sitting next to me, wearing worn out clothes with broken eyeglasses and bloodstains all over his shirt. He was rubbing his hands on my blanket. I looked at him and he smiled. That was the scariest moment of my whole life. I felt like I was about to be hurt. It wasn't sleep paralysis, because believe me, I know the difference. I lied my head back and I probably passed out till the next morning. When I told my mom, she said it was just a bad dream. Whatever. And no one at my school believed me. It was like a funny thing for them to do, to make me talk about what I've seen, just to laugh about it. The next day, I woke up at the exact same time. This time there was no one on my bed, but... I saw a guy wearing weird gothic kind of clothes and he was next to my sister, playing with her hair. I haven't seen anything else after that, but I always heard people talking in the room, more like hisses and whistles. Sometimes someone would breathe in my ears while I'm asleep, sometimes they'd take my pillow away, but that was it, they never truly hurt us. I find it fun to talk about it right now. My sister was friends, kind of, with our neighbor's daughter. She was with her in school. She told me some creepy things about their family, things I hadn't given much attention to at the time because I was young, and I think they had something to do with all these shady things. They never closed their apartment door. It's always open. Always. My sister also told me that she once saw her friend bathing with her clothes on, and she always smelled so bad. She also told me that the bathroom lock would be unlocked in our apartment sometimes when she's showering. My oldest brother said that he would usually see my mom wandering in the house while he's pretty sure she was asleep in the bedroom, and when he asked her, she'd say that she was asleep. My other brother said that he once saw two shadows dancing on the wall in the living room. My mom opened up about it a few years ago and told me that sometimes she would check on us while we were asleep, and she'd see us playing in the living room at the same time. She also said that every couple of months she would ask my dad to buy new cups and glasses because they would go missing for no reason. She said she never knew what was going on and neither did my dad, but they didn't want to acknowledge it because they didn't want us to be afraid and my dad couldn't afford to move to another place. She also said that some of my sister's dolls would be scattered around the house sometimes. She told me that she once saw a man with a long beard in the corridor and that she ran to her bedroom and locked the door till my dad came back from work. She told me that when she was at the hospital, before giving birth to me, 
my dad woke up to another woman next to him. He said she kissed him and told him that she loves him. When my dad asked her who she was, she just left the room and never saw her again. That's everything I can remember right now. We live in different countries now and we rarely meet, me and my family. But when we do, we talk about it and laugh as if it is a funny thing to talk about. We never knew what was happening, but it was quite an experience. I wanted to tell you guys about a house that my wife and I lived in for a little over a year that we're pretty sure was haunted. Well, I feel it was haunted and my wife would just smile and roll her eyes when I would blame the weird noise or occurrence on the ghost. I feel it should be noted that some of these things could have been real, tangible causes, but it was just so much that it was so unexplained I just don't know. A little bit of backstory. My wife and I moved to Clayton, North Carolina not far outside of Raleigh, for work and we lived in this house for about a year and a few months. It's a one-story house that sat on a corner lot in a very normal looking cookie cutter neighborhood and we didn't get to view it before moving because we had to move so quickly. We had to take what we could get. We have since moved to a new house but not because of the haunted house I'm telling you about. It should also be noted that this house wasn't old. It wasn't in any way creepy and I think part of it's unassuming nature is what made all this stranger. This list may get long. Because I don't recall the order of things occurred, I'll just list the instances. 1. Loud crashing sounds. Full disclosure, we had six cats, so we know when we hear things crashing and falling and breaking, it's 99% going to be them. It's just what happens with cats. But in these instances, we'd hear, yes, both my wife and me, what sounded like the most epic of all crashes, but upon searching the entire house, garage included, and absolutely nothing was out of place or broken. This happened a few times at the beginning, and it was really strange. Number two, footsteps in the attic. Yes, you read that right, and that was creepy. In fact, the footsteps were heard so often and so distinctly that when I had maintenance over, I asked him to check if it looked like someone was living up there. He said it didn't and that it was probably just natural sounds of the house, but my wife and I begged to differ. One time we were both in the closet hanging up clothes and then stomp, stomp, stomp. We even put our phone on a selfie stick, stood up on a stepladder and recorded what we saw in the attic. We didn't see anything unusual which I guess is ultimately good but seriously confused us. Number 3. Picture fell off the wall. One day I was working from home and chatting with my friends about my haunted house when all of a sudden the picture just popped off the wall. Full disclosure, it was heavier than normal frame, but nothing happened to make it happen, like no loud bangs or disturbances or anything. Just one second it's up there, and the next it's on the floor with the nail still in the wall. Number 4. The Lighting I hesitate to put this in here because I really think it's the electrical work in the house, but the microwave light would sometimes flicker. Toward the end of our stay at the house, I changed the light bulb for the porch light and that would flicker like mad, like a strobe light, and then it would just stop and either work right or not at all. One of the guest rooms had bad wiring or something too because the light in there would not turn on or so we thought. One time I left the switch in the on position not realizing it and... When we got up in the morning, the light was on. Number 5. The air vent. I'm going to do my best to describe this. We had an air vent that was about 3 feet in height and about 2 feet wide. So it was a decent size and certainly something a person could get into if they weren't overweight. It was located at the bottom of the wall towards the floor. Well, one day we got home and I noticed that the heavy piece of furniture that we had sitting in the front of the vent was scooted out a bit more. I assume my wife had moved it for something, or rather, just forgot to put it back in place. But when I asked her, she said she hadn't moved it. Upon further inspection, I noticed the little clasps to the air vent were almost completely gone, like it had been opened. This was creepy too, because my first thought was not, this is a ghost. My first thought was, who's been in my house? My best logical guess could be maintenance, even though I'm pretty sure it'd be close to illegal for them to enter the house without us knowing ahead of time. 
and it wasn't like the filter was changed. I would think if it were maintenance, the filter would have at least been changed. Either way, that was a bit disturbing. And number six, the whistle. This one scared me the absolute most. My wife and I were in bed and I don't think we were watching TV. I think it was quiet and she was either reading or we were on our phones or something similarly quiet and we both heard a whistle in the hallway closest to the front door, but it was definitely coming from inside the house. Because it sounded nearby, it wasn't a long song or anything, it was sort of just a single note, but oh my god, we both just looked at each other terrified. I froze and I'm pretty sure a tear came to my eyes because what is going on? Upon further investigation, there was no one there, no thing there, nothing was turned on to make the noise. No TVs, no radios, no electronics of any kind. We have no idea what that was, but it was terrifying. I think that's all I have for this one, since moving to our new house, which does actually look older, and like it has more history, we've not had anything strange happen. No crashing, no noises, no flickering lights, so this house is definitely not haunted. Thank you for reading. I've been meaning to write this down for some time and just never had the time. I honestly don't know when I stop dreaming. I have never been entirely fearful of the paranormal, but I haven't been exactly naive to the possible existence of the paranormal. Having grown up in a religious household, the thought of someone coming back from heaven was nonsense. Anything that bothered anyone in this realm of the world was a demon or an angel, no in between. So that is always what I've tried to convince myself to believe. But something about the paranormal has always grabbed my interest, and whether I like it or not, I have some weird feelings that I can't explain. This encounter was no exception. I had lived in a not-so-creepy house or some boring property in the suburbs for the entirety of my childhood with my two younger siblings. Nothing happens out here aside from some soccer moms getting their panties in a twist over nothing. When this happened, I was about 13, my sister was about 10, and my brother was about 5. This night was going on as normal, except for the fact that my little brother was sleeping on the floor of my room. It was around 11pm when we decided to actually start getting ready to sleep. I set my brother's makeshift bed up and I began to notice that my brother was pretty apprehensive. I wrote it off as the dark was making him nervous, so as any big sister would, I told him to lay down and to not worry about the dark. There was nothing to be afraid of, or so I thought. It couldn't have been more than a few hours later when I heard my brother jostling around. Annoyed, I just turned on my side and tried to go back to sleep, but despite my best efforts of blocking him out, this pattern of jostling and staying still went on for probably a few minutes and I started to get frustrated. I even thought of telling my brother to shut up and go back to bed. Then I noticed something odd. He was whispering. Every time he would whisper, he would jostle around. I listened closer, but I couldn't make out what he was saying. Eventually, I poked him from the edge of my own bed and asked him why he was moving around so much. This man keeps grabbing me. My brother whispered frantically, He keeps grabbing my blankie. Well, that caught my attention. I was confused, but it was 3am and the last thing that I wanted to do was console my scared brother. Although I was alarmed at his urgency, I assured him that it was just a nightmare and to try and sleep again. Reluctantly, he laid back down and we began to sleep. But again, I heard that same jostling around. I was really getting fed up with this constant interruption, but before I got the chance to even begin scolding my brother, I soon felt my brother frantically throwing himself under my covers. I was shocked, to say the least, but anger got the better of me. I stared at my brother as he just clenched onto my torso. Samuel, what on earth are you doing? I whispered at my now shaking brother. He was drenched in sweat and burning hot but something did not seem right about him being this scared of anything. His breathing was choppy, and he was crying, but he managed to say something to me. The man is back. I felt this massive pit in my stomach form. 
There was no way this was happening. Samuel, what man? There isn't anyone here. I somehow managed to ask him, despite my own trembling. My brother then froze completely, almost as if on cue my closet door diagonal from where my bed was slammed opened on its own. I stared absolutely dumbstruck by what I had just seen. Before I could even scream or anything, a shadow crawled out of the doorway and made its way closer to my bedroom door, as if it just casually exited. But it stopped right at the foot of my bed. There was no face, hardly any figure, just this dark shadow looming over my brother and I. But everything in my body was screaming that this was nothing friendly. I threw myself under the covers just like my brother and did the only thing I could think of doing. Pray. I said the Lord's Prayer so fast and so many times that I can't even remember. The entire time, there was this feeling of doom, like something horrible was about to happen. Until morning light, we stayed under those covers, praying that whatever that was would go away. At the first glimpse of light hitting the top of my bed frame, I mustered up the courage to run directly to my bedroom and slam it shut. Of course, we tried to explain to our parents that what happened well, happened, and unsurprisingly, they didn't believe a word of it. They wrote it off as a fever dream or a nightmare. It's been a few years and my brother doesn't remember a thing, but the thing that doesn't make me want to write this off is that, ever since then, I have been hyper aware of this looming feeling of just bad around my house. I still live in my childhood home. I get nightmares and I really feel incredibly uneasy whenever the lights are out in my house. Who knows what this was, if it is anything at all. But I felt like contributing something. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, our Let's Read official and give and receive feedback from the community and maybe even hear it featured here on the channel, and grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.